recorded another record breaking day of COVID-19 cases, the second day of more than a thousand cases this week. So the contact tracers have a massive job. 1,252 Hoosiers diagnosed with COVID-19 on Thursday. It's the first time we've had two days in a row with more than a thousand new cases. And just these two days, that's nearly 2,300 more people infected with the virus here in central Indiana. And we hear from a lot of you asking about the positivity rate, how many positive tests compared to how many tests were done. It can show if enough testing is being done to spot where the virus is spreading. The goal is to be below this 5% line. That's the dotted red line there. And in what you're looking at now, we focus on the seven day average. That's this dotted line. As of last Friday for the state, the positivity rate is seven and a half percent. You could see the number has been pretty steady for a couple weeks. We dipped just barely below that 5% mark for a bit in June, but have been above ever since. And in case you're wondering why the number seems so behind, that's the most current number the state puts out because it takes a few days to get in the data to reliably calculate positivity. As we break down those numbers, more students are going to be starting their school year on Monday, and we still can't seem to agree on the safest way to learn. So we're listening to a parent who just filed a complaint against her son's school because she says he can't get the help he needs at home. We're hearing from schools about an unexpected problem with contact tracing. And our Emily Longnecker is digging into a fight over school funding that could complicate each district's decision even more. You got it, come on. Ten-year-old Dylan Digg may not be able to tell you with words how much he missed school after COVID-19 hit. But his actions last spring said it all. He would like sit by the front door and wait for the bus and the bus wouldn't come. Um, he was just really struggling. Are you excited, Dylan? Dylan has quadriplegic cerebral palsy. He's nonverbal and tube fed uh, and requires pretty much 24-hour assistance. And gets it at home with parents Greg and Aaron Digg. Look at you go! Plus a team of teachers and therapists at his Hamilton Southeastern Elementary School. It's something that is truly priceless that we can't replicate at home. That's why when the Dags learned just a few weeks ago the district was going to virtual learning at least until Labor Day, they knew that wouldn't work for Dylan after they tried it last spring. Truly, it was a disaster. The Dags say they repeatedly reached out to the district looking for answers and got nowhere. So they filed this complaint with the Department of Education. We do believe strongly that he will get left behind and he will regress in ways that he might not recover from if we don't get him back in school. The district couldn't comment on Dylan's case, but said they sent a letter to parents of students with disabilities, telling them they plan to hold meetings with parents to decide if a student can only learn at school. Right now, the school hasn't committed to do any specific thing for any specific child. So until that happens, the Digs are moving forward with their complaint. They say Dylan's well-being depends on it. If we don't stand up and be loud and say, hey, like, don't. Diggs aren't alone in their concerns. Earlier this week, we met the Moore family. They're also struggling with at-home learning right now for their son, Jackson, who has special needs. His parents, Amanda and Adam, are stuck with a difficult choice. Should one of them quit their job to stay home and help the kids? Or when in-person learning resumes, do they send their kids back and risk them getting sick? Every single night, Adam and I look at each other and we're just like, I mean, what do we do? And we're just living literally hour by hour at this point. Parents know the problems don't stop once schools open up in the classrooms. Take a look here. These are just a few of the districts that already have at least one confirmed case. And we know more are on the way. Schools have reported contact tracing to track down every possible person close to somebody infected with COVID-19, but that's posing problems of its own. Turns out a lot of parents are hanging up the phone the second the health department starts asking questions. If you received a telephone call from someone asking about you, your family and COVID-19, would you believe they're a legitimate contact tracer or a scammer? No legitimate contact tracer would ask for money, financial information, or a social security number. If they do, hang up. Legitimate calls from the State Department of Health have this caller ID and telephone number. If you don't pick up, there will be follow-up texts, voicemails, and letters. The information contact tracers are after, public health officials say, could help protect you and your family and slow the pandemic.
And schools are constantly weighing the risk of online and in-person learning as the semester continues. But now there's a fight unfolding in the state house uh, that could complicate things. One of the leaders in the state Senate is warning schools they could lose funding if they only offer online classes. We're talking about a 15% budget cut. Now the American Federation of Teachers wants Governor Holcomb to restore full funding to public schools, regardless of how students are learning. As of right now, that hasn't happened. And yesterday, Indiana State University announced it's postponing its football season because of the pandemic. It's the latest college to make an adjustment because of COVID-19. The school has postponed its fall football season. Uh, so ISU says it's still possible they'll play football in the spring. A Missouri Valley Football Conference also announced no league games in the fall. And the FC says individual schools can make decisions on playing games in the fall at their discretion. The eight game league schedule will happen in the spring and Butler season is also canceled after the team's league withdrew from conference competition.